If he has like ideas because he writes around his lyrics. Sure. He writes all the lyrics and then he just has ideas of the riffs he wants, how they go, so kind of you know, try and play. Sometimes I'll even hum a riff or whistle it and then yeah. like, I'll try and figure something out. And then Chris writes some riffs too and then we just get all the riffs and then all go together and kind of put them together to make the song happen. Sure. So with music writing in general, um, you know, there's a lot of musical techniques, musical theory that's out there, and I'm kind of curious, do you have any favorite mu musical techniques, maybe not even something that you do personally, but even something that you respect in like a totally different genre? Um, we're more of a basic, we don't really get too technical with this stuff, so we're just, it's more of a feeling, I think, than more like technical music, you know, techniques and stuff like that, so just what sounds good, and we just take it from there. I mean, like, we don't have... Like this, I, I, when I came back, I finally put some guitar solos in. So like I, but I just, it's all still feeling. We're not, we're not definitely not the most technical band out there. When so it you comes don't to like that. drop down any strings or anything like that. No, cool. we do. We have two tunings. We have straight. Well, I mean, no, the tuning is way lower than normal E. Okay. And C, which right. is low, and then B standard B and standard C, and that's it. So that's all the songs. Nice. Um, now some of those early albums compared to now um you know now you're kind of isn't it kind of with this latest album aren't you guys kind of getting back to some of those earlier roots or i think it's i think it's a little bull i think because we also have some more metal too i think it's yeah but we did want to get back we don't want to change the formula too much because sure. then people you know if it's not broke don't fix it right for sure but we still we incorporate like i said some guitar solos and some almost like Slayer type stuff. Nice. But then we got the fast hardcore songs. So that, Cause that's what we listen to, we listen to both. We listen to hardcore, thrash, punk. Now is it, We just kind of combine everything. Isn't Slayer kind of like sped up Coco beats? Somebody said that? I don't know. It could, I true? mean, I guess I never thought of it that way, but I guess, <laughs> yeah. Could be something like that, but. <laughs> but that's what we just do. We just try to take what we like and put it all together. Nice. Just a good mix of hardcore metal. Um. So getting into some of the funner questions, um, uh -oh. <laughs> this one, first one, feel free to pull in dead people. <laughs> dead people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your biggest musical fantasy? <laughs> musical fantasy, I guess we'll be, like, yeah, to pull in some dead people, okay. play, play a show with like Randy Rhodes, Cliff Burton. Sure. And that's, I mean, that would just be like, those were two iconic people in my opinion that are dead. Now do you have any like favorite locations where you'd play? Uh, if just the home, whole world. Connecticut. I yeah. guess because I love playing, oh it's always great playing back. I, I mean everyone, obviously it's great everywhere, but sure. and just to play to the people, sometimes you'll see your friends and family and like, and it's just, and we have a good vibe there, so I always love it there. Yeah. Although Germany is really good too, because we play really big festivals there and you see the whole crowd jumping yeah. and all that stuff, so. Now, kind of getting back to a more standard question, speaking of international audiences and stuff like that, um, having played all over the world at this point, what are the differences between the audiences that you've noticed um, when you're touring internationally compared to playing in like a hometown? I think in Europe, they're just more, um, they're more just, they're, they've come from all over. It's not just, because we'll play, like I said, the festivals, you'll see people from Spain and sure. France and everything else, and there's just, it's just more. I think it's bigger. Yeah. It's a lot smaller, it seems, in the U.S., but like I said, it's all good, but I think that's that's the main thing. You're just more more into it, I think. Do you notice, like, any differences, like, with it, when when it comes to, like, the mosh pits, for example? No, they're pretty, they're pretty universal when it comes to us. Maybe yeah. other bands might be different, but... Because I was thinking, like, some of the shows I went to in Europe, like, they do the running in the circle, as opposed to, like, here it's more, like, Yeah, they, they do it both. You know? I think it depends on how much space there is. Yeah. That's the thing. For sure. But yeah, it's pretty... Pretty similar from what I've seen from our crowds. Nice. Um, with the new album, um, can you maybe walk us through a track or two? Maybe the process that you went through when creating it. Maybe if something unexpected happened, it doesn't have to necessarily be your favorite, but maybe tell a story about um, you know the creation for like a song or two or the inspiration. Uh, like I said, there, well, there's like Jamie will come in and will show me some. It'll be like. It'll be like really slow and like, but it'll be like, he'll play the notes or so it'll be like, like this is, this is all of them actually. I can't think of a specific song, but this is a lot of them. I just remember from this last one and he'll play something and it'll be like, so I'll be trying to get the notes right and he'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That sounds good. Or maybe here, maybe there. And like I'll play it and I'll be like, 
And I'm thinking in my mind, like, okay, I don't know if that's gonna sound all right. And then our producer Zeus will like put the, the click track on it. And he'll be like, oh, put it on this, because it'll be the, the correct speed. So it'll be like, so this little slow thing, it's like, do, 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 do. And then it'll be like, put the click track, so I'm like, do, 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 do. So I'm like, da, 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 da. And like, oh, wow. And it's like, how it creates out of that, it's like, that's still baffling for me how he does that, but so that's that's probably my main story. That you'd have to really see it to get the full effect, but sure. how it how it transpires from where it starts is it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I love the creative process. Yeah. Sometimes it takes the directions you don't even expect. Yeah, like, you know, like, <laughs> okay, now I see where you're going with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, no, I, I, this this album I think is my favorite that I've played on. No, so why far. is that? It's just it's fast. It's it's heavy. And aggressive and it's just everything everything it's like the, even if there's only there's two guitar solos on it and they're my favorite ones i think that i've done in the songs like i do little notey stuff but not like full-on guitar solos and it's uh ad has one and then um oh man i'm drawing a blank we haven't played it live yet i can't even think right now that's okay, I'm really bad with things too, so you're preaching to the fire. That's okay, it's sometimes, like, it, co it happens. We talk about it all the time. It's alright. <laughs> Aaron's distracting me coming in. Uh-oh. That's, yep, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Devil driver. He's running away, we were just waiting for that. I saw it, I was like, wait. Like, 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 that's not mine. Like, you don't have to take it away. Like, you're about to go and come chill. Seriously, you're okay. <laughs> you're good. Sit down, join us. Hello. I feel better. There you go. Yeah, this is Aaron. He's guitar tech extraordinaire for Double Driver. Hello, hello. He's an avid Sprite drinker. It's the only way to drink it. Hey. It's like cutting my Snickers with a knife and fork. See, I'm at it. It's like distracting me out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, I can't even think of what I'm songs about. I don't. Know. He's like making faces. I'm from Michigan, but it's you know, it's like medical over there, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> So you got you get to uh, play around with Dez now, huh? Yeah. He's a, he's a character. I remember meeting him back in oh god when he was with Cold Chamber and Drowning Pool. So we're going back to 2001, 2002 ish because you know the lead singer of Drowning Pool unfortunately right. died on the year of Ozfest oh, that I was on. I was actually there when they found his dead body. Oh. Like people, we were checking into the hotel and people like elbowed past us and they're like, we need an ambulance to the gold bus out back now. And we're like, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh. Wow, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it was a eye-opening event. So well, let's pull you into the mix a little wow. bit. How did you get started teching? This is one of my party friends in crime. We were uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> How did I get in the industry? Uh, yeah. So I was in the army Actually, for I met a decade. Him. Oh, I really? met him and Mayhem when we yeah. were five figured out. Oh, that's much right. initially, yeah. yeah. Nice. I just, yesterday, are you familiar with the Golden Knights, oh, the yeah. army parachuters? Oh, yeah. I just went up in the plane with them yesterday and watched them parachute out when I was covering the um, air show in Punta Gorda. I'm a former paratrooper with 82nd Army. Really? That's so awesome. That's way more exciting than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I play guitar. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you're bored. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> Yeah, it was definitely, a, I'll give you guys props for doing that. It was definitely an eye-opening experience, you know, because they have, you know, both both sides of the plane are open for them guys to jump out, and uh, it gets chilly up there. It does. It's really? Cold. I was like, my, my little toesies were cold, and I was like going like this, and the guys were like, oh, here, I have some gloves. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not that warm. Definitely. So how'd you go from military to uh, music? I was uh, teaching the advanced course in Missouri. And um, OTEP, who I was good friends with, the bass sure. player. They were on with us too. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, they were on tour with Death Punch playing Pops, and he just said, Come out and hang out. So he introduced me to Zoltan, and Zoe and I just clicked. Thanks. So uh, they just gave me a tour line and said, Hey, any show you want to come to, come out and hang out. And nice. So I started going, and eventually yeah. they're like, You want a job? Shoot the t shirt cannon, Mayhem Fest? I was still in the Army. So I took leave <laughs> from the Army. When did Familiar that? Familiar with the weapons. Yeah, I know how to shoot. I, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Now, did time. you have to do t-shirt cannons I, when you were attacked? I didn't do that. Jamie used to do it himself. He, <laughs> he like he's a very hands-on kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, at the end of that, they're like, when you got out of the army, you have a job with us. And so when I got out of the army that next summer, I was uh, Chris Kale and Jay Hook's tech, nice. and then uh, just kind of you know jump from camp to camp. Yeah, yeah. Ivan, he's a great personality. He, he definitely is. Uh, he's a, he has a personality. He has a personality. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> that is for sure. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been with Double Trevor checking for it? Double this is my third run. So my first run was the last North American run. Okay. And then uh, 
Europe and now this one, and I, yeah, I worked for a number of different camps. So nice. I came right, right from the Gus G camp, doing the Gus G Angel Vivaldi tour. I was on that for a little while. And nice. Yeah. Now with both you guys, when you were working, when you were working as tech and as you as a tech now, are you guys in a union? Is that a union no. thing or no? It's it's just kind it's, of who it's, you know. Yeah. This is the uh, the industry of homies. Sure. It's all really who you know. I mean, yeah. you could yeah. suck and not know a thing, but if you know the right person, like shit. I actually I can for, uh, I did I actually tech for Rihanna on a tour. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> that was. Fun. Now I've heard that sometimes some of the rap tours are a little bit more plush as far as accommodations. Oh, way more. <laughs> <laughs> a little. <laughs> A whole Just different world. <laughs> yeah, that was like full breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah, right there. That was that was nice. a lot of money. As yeah. A, you know, compared to my other tech jobs. Yeah. Right? I was with the Jacksons. It's all casinos. Yeah, so it's yeah, buffet all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah the oh, casino. No. Yeah, a lot of them like the casinos. Yep, for sure. And then you know everybody treats yep. the Jacksons like royalty, so yeah, you, you get treated the same. It's yeah, Marco fun. Zambrano. He that's was. That's my friend. That's how I got. the he was supposed to do the Rihanna one with me. Yeah, he was doing what Jay Z or something. Yeah, his name? And yeah. Mary J. And yeah, yeah, Beyonce. Mary J. Yeah, he's he's that's all around. My guy. Like, he was we were too. Wasn't he in Fear Factory? Oh yeah. Yeah, he was on us back in 2002. So he's been around. What's up, Marco? <laughs> we'll tag them. I'm gonna have you do interviews with me all the time. Sweet, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I also play bass in Green Jello, so we can talk about oh, that too. Go. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my god! So how did you get going with that? How did that go? Uh, I played in another band called Kings of Carnage, and it's all military. Oh, okay. So nice. it's three Marines and two Army. Um, and we were doing a Halloween gig, and if you know Bill from Green Jello, he just takes local bands. Yeah. He'll book a tour, mm -hmm. just have local bands. Either they're awesome or they just suck balls. Uh, but it's nice to give him the experience. Yeah, you know? so that's kind of what he that's does. Cool. Yeah. Um, and so I contacted him about just doing a song with us. He's like, actually, I'm playing that night at the same club. Do you want to be my band? So I got on YouTube and just saw how he did things, and we rehearsed that way. So when we went in, we were just tight, and he was blown away. So he's like, do you want to be my California, Arizona, Nevada band? So we're the only band he'll actually pay to travel with them. Right. So that way, if it's like a big gig and he wants it to be, you know, epic, he'll he'll take us. Yeah. So and then we did the the new album coming out. Nice. So, nursery cards. There you go. See, we're, we're just all tech musicians here. Yeah. It is. Well, the circle's really small once you really get into yeah. the mix of it. Well, you know. Um, Brian, who's actually holding the camera there, he actually plays in a band here, and we know each other from down in Key West and stuff like that. I, when I was on Ozfest, I wound up hooking up with the Titty Painter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lost Harley <laughs> Girl on tour, so back in my younger uh, sexier years. Yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of a natural connection. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously we're all into music, and... Brian is just phenomenal, phenomenal uh, musician. Uh, your band is Violet's Breed. Violet's Breed. Yeah. yeah. So all right. you never know. You cool. may see them coming yeah. up here. They have female lead singers. So kind of all sexy, right. sexy. All right. Right. Core band. Sex sells. Right. Core band with a female singer. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Like right. that, right? <laughs> So, um, getting back into some of the fun questions, you guys want to do a couple like random silly questions? I know he will. I don't know. I'm <laughs> Way, right? like, sense of humor is amazing. You'll love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have questions. like I have like two personality questions that I ask everyone. And I always get some weird reactions because they sound like hogwash, but I swear to God they have like a psychological basis to them. First question: If you were a unicorn. And you could be any color but white. But what color would you be? And would you have any special powers? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel I'd be all drab. Um, because you know it's, it's green like the military, but it's still green like marijuana. You know? Great answer. And my special power would just be everybody automatically stoned. You ain't gonna smoke. You gotta dress yeah. nothing. Just. Yeah, I, I love that. I'm totally <laughs> down with that. How <laughs> magical is that? <laughs> that is definitely a good power that we need. <laughs> You're welcome. I would just be black because I'm plain and boring and my power would be to hang out with him. <laughs> that's magical enough for me. <laughs> Might even be a little too magical. <laughs> you can always have my residuals, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one more totally silly random question for you guys. Describe yourselves as far as physical person physical characteristics and personality traits. Describe yourself as your choice, either a dog, a cat, or a cartoon. 
I'm more of a cartoon. He's definitely more like a cat. <laughs> Can you explain these? Okay. Sure. I'll let him explain it for me, which is much better. That's okay. Well, for all of us that know that have glorious beards, okay, <laughs> right? right. When have you not met an animated bearded wonder? No. True. Right? Good one, good one. We are always the epitome of excitement in every bar. You want to have fun? Find a dude with tattoos and a beard. I guess that's why I'm hanging out with them all the time. <laughs> You're almost there. Yeah, that's all you get. Right? Yeah, so, like, yeah, like, he's, he's like a quarter inch. He's like half start, start, He's, he's start, half tall. And he gets more than me. Right? Well, I don't know. I get a couple of And then the cat. <laughs> and the cat personality is more like, because, you know, dogs are so obedient and right at the heel. And you're just more like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad I pulled you in here now. Because <laughs> yeah. I want to be able to answer that one. See, I always joke, I don't know if you guys know Pepper Keenan. No, a little bit. Yeah, I always described him as like the Shushire cat because he always comes in with this huge smile, appears out of nowhere, and is like, hi, hi, big hugs. And before you know it, he just disappears and you're like, did I hallucinate or was that just Pepper Keyman? Probably. Slaughtered in Their Dreams was a song I was trying to think of before when he was distracted with his beard. That See, it comes to you. Yeah. It does. Now that, now that you know See, it. at least we caught it on camera. Now we got that. All right. Coming full circle. Coming full circle. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not a boring person. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so what about the other two? Are you with this tour and everything, what do you guys have um, that you're looking forward to? And after tour, what do you guys have going on? Like, what well, are it's actually you almost over. On? Yeah. Yeah. It's Friday is the last yeah. show. Yeah. This is actually the second run of this. We already did one in May and June, the same lineup, which was just so good. That's why we did another one. But that Friday, that's we. I think we have the rest of the year off. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I don't know. No, what about Devil Driver, you guys? Uh, see, Devil Driver's doing stuff, but I'm going out with other bands. Who are you going to be jumping on with? Um, I'm going out with Jeff Tate doing the Trinity Tour nice. with Ripper Owens and uh, Blaze Bailey. And then I'm also doing the Dee Schneider gigs coming up. Nice. Uh, for a solo tour since Twisted Sister retired. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, what else? Uh, I don't know. But then again, things always pop up last minute. Like, they're like, we have all this time off. Oh, wait, we're playing shows. Up. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> all know I know is Friday is the last show of this tour. This tour. Yeah, until yeah. the next one. Comes Anything up. can happen. <laughs> Now, um, with both you guys, I mean, even with the Army, you've probably traveled all throughout, and I know you've mm -hmm. traveled throughout, so what are some of your favorite places to travel to, and is there anywhere that you have not been that you would like to go to? Well, Australia is always fun. It's just really nice weather, and it just always seems like everyone's in a good mood. From what I've seen, maybe well, you have different experiences. Except for the dudes, because you're always talking to their chicks. Well, <laughs> you weren't with me in Australia. But I know you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on next. <laughs> right, what's the next question? <laughs> Where do I want to go? Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know. Greece Actually, cool. China, we haven't played yet. I've been in a connection in the airport, but I've never, we never played there, so I think that would be Oh, cool. so you've never seen the live show in the buildings? Ah, oh, sick. I haven't been there. That's the one place we haven't played, I think. Nice. No. Let's see what happens. Maybe me and you will go. I right. yeah, let's, no, let's, let's do it. Let's just side Yeah, come on. Right. <laughs> We'll call uh, it dose. <laughs> <laughs> now, both you guys, having traveled so much, what's your favorite way to travel? Cruise ship? Okay. Yeah. Uh, See, I get claustrophobic on cruise ships. I find myself, like, not being able to sleep. <laughs> the best thing for me, because going into airports is, like, it's just such a pain in the ass, security and all that. But when you go to the airport, you get a hotel. When you're on the bus, you're comfortable that you're on a bus. The best thing for you me would be, like, you could do a bus and a hotel every day. That would be a lot of, a big yeah. waste of money, but that would be, like, perfect. Yeah, when we were on Ozfest, I was like, um, let's just all check in and get a jacuzzi suite. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be my, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> totally yeah. Good. yeah. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I covered the first I mean, I've never been on a private time. jet, so I don't know, but I'm sure that would be. That's fun, too. Yeah. 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 Private jet to hotel. That would be good. That's also sick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was yeah. a test car taking in between. All that Especially stuff. Especially if you can bypass the yeah. area. All that stuff. Know, yes. That would be things. the ultimate. <laughs> um, now, when you guys are on the road touring, um, what are three, three, three things that you guys must have with you? Baby wipes. Must. Especially in Europe. Right. So, single flies. So <laughs> iPhone. iPhone. With a world plan. Yes. Yeah, you don't want to go overseas and then it's like $40 for a... a oh, yeah. 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 And, uh... Enough 
enough clothes to get you through a little bit before we can find a washer and dryer right. somewhere. Yeah. Right. Everything else we could just find along the way. Yeah. I literally throw my socks away. I, I do that sometimes. That do that. I mean, yeah. just throw away. It's cheaper yeah. and easier just to go to yeah. Walmart and buy a six dollar pack than spending four hours doing that. six hours of laundry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um now uh when you are touring, um, you had mentioned like having your cell phone with you. Do you ever like sit there and do stuff on your cell phone as far as musically create stuff and stuff like that? Not really, because I'm playing so much the rest I don't really do too much other than I usually watch the other bands. I'm probably the only person in the band that like you're playing on stage every night. Why are you watching everyone all the time? But I I still I love I'm still a fan. So it's good for me just yeah. hanging out. And, and he's also always there when they build the stage that's too. too. I just like usually you kick the artist out of the way. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. But I uh, usually check my own guitar before, in the morning because uh, it's just what I nothing else to do. Yeah. 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 Now, that's what um, I do. That's what he does. Do you guys have any um, like maybe favorite bands or bands that you enjoy that people might not expect? Like maybe outside? I'm a ginormous Hall & Oates fan. Thanks. Huge. You can ask him. I play it every day in one build. I like Beyonce, actually. That's pretty right. unexpected, I'm sure. Yeah. A little uh, different. Uh, Joe Bonamassa? Love Bonamassa. That guy's sick. White Snake? I thought I liked some White Snake. It's classic! White, White Snake and Beyonce. <laughs> now they should do a tour together. So, there you go. That was a nice <laughs> random random generation. <laughs> um. Um, is there anything that we did not talk about, about that you guys want to make sure that we talk about? Any Go links? buy the Concrete Confessional from Hatebreed, because it's good. Because it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and come see us when we come through your town, state, country, wherever. Two very important things to do in life. You? Come find me on tour and let's party. There you go. I'd probably be with them, so. It usually is. Do you guys have any advice for people who want to get started in the music industry, even as a tech or a musician? If you want to make money, be a tech. <laughs> <laughs> There's more money, right? But that's how you're done paying out the bottom line. Yeah, yeah it's, it's way easier to jump on a train that's already rolling than try and be creative and get shot down. That's true. It is. Cuckoo, kachoo. Full steam ahead. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm, I'm, I'm okay. He's so. doing alright. It only took like, like 20 know. years. Yeah, it only took like 20 <laughs> years, but finally. Finally, look where we are. <laughs> we'll have a luxury here. Like, the lights are around you here with the, uh, you know, hey, it's alright. Full of Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any links you want to plug as far as uh, where you can find music, connections, Facebook, internet, anything uh, like that? You can that? find me on my Instagram at Wayne Lozanak. That's W A Y N E L O Z I N A K. Uh, you can find me at Aaron underscore D M F B P because I'm the motherfucking bass player. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any particular hashtags or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, no, not for me. What do I ever say? <laughs> I say all kinds of shit. Yeah, I mean, they're in there, but you'll just have to follow me and find out. Yeah. Maybe better with the other kind of hash. Him, him, not me. Yeah, he's not really a You're not hot a smoker. smoker. Nah. He's more of a beer drinker. That's me. You, what are what are your vices? Coors Light and women, but Coors Light and women. That's what sounds like to him. <laughs> <laughs> He knows me so well. <laughs> but we're in love. Wayne, get on the bus. <laughs> All right, Aaron, you're done here. Thanks. 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 All right, Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> really appreciate it. And um, is there any uh, final thoughts, comments, things you want to add? Uh, that's about it. Just hopefully you come see us when we play and go say hello to him if you see him. And gave him some weed, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and thank you guys for the interview. It was fun. No Good. I'm glad All you enjoyed right. it. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Signing off. Thanks so much, y'all. Join us next time.